Call the April 7th, USD, 354 Board of Education meeting to order. Welcome to all the visitors here tonight. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Yeah, for uh, Section D under Executive Session items, we need to add uh, number two for negotiations. Okay, are there any other additions or changes to the agenda? No, that's it. Okay. Any information to approve the agenda? Mr. President, I mean, we approve the agenda as an amendment. Second. Okay. Move and second to approve the agenda as an amendment. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Consent agenda. I have nothing unusual to report here. No consent agenda items. We all got back ahead of time. Is there any questions? Anything on the motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. President, I move the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Move and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Any patron comments tonight? All right. Move on to the business agenda. First up, Mr. Dell. I turn it over to these guys. Uh, Mr. Dell, if you recall, we got that grant through uh, Monsanto uh, to get iPads in his classroom. And uh, he's been uh, adding some things along the way here. Uh, asked him to come present to you what he's been doing. <coughs> he's all on the sky to show him what to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Mr. Meyer said, uh, we received some iPads from my classroom through the Monsanto grant. And <clears throat> they've been a great addition to my classroom. And I chose two things to, to show you that we've been using the iPads for. Uh, one is Edmodo, uh, which is a, it's a web-based or an app-based uh, program that allows me to, com to communicate with my students. Uh, it's also an interface where they can communicate um, with their class members uh, in, in class. Um, I can post assignments, I can post quizzes, I can post links and videos and things. And it's just a, another uh, platform where I can communicate with my students and they can communicate with me. Um, uh, for instance, I can type uh, notes uh, to my class, like this would be my fifth hour of physics class, and I can send them uh, a note that uh, you know, they could read. You know, maybe I want to update them on an assignment. Um, maybe I want to uh, direct them towards a, a link that I'd, I'd like them to read, or uh, even link uh, maybe a video for them uh, to watch at some point. Um, I can also send alerts through Edmodo where maybe we're having a, a test or a quiz, and I can remind them about that test or quiz, or once again, maybe in a, an assignment change, and, and I could update uh, them. Uh, I can time them to where you know they go off at a certain uh, day or a certain time, uh, which is uh, a really nice feature, uh, you know, especially for, for testing quizzes. You know, don't forget to study for your test, something simple like that. Um, assignments. I can assign work to uh, a class or even an individual student. So for instance, if I wanted to assign Skylar an assignment right now, I can send it specifically to Skylar. And I could pose a question to me. So I could ask Skylar, you know, what, what school are you attending? Next year. So I can send him that question, and Skyler will specifically get that assignment. 
and then he can submit that back uh, to me. Um, a lot of the kids, uh, they like the, the apps that they download, apps to the to iPad or even their, their uh, smartphone. Um, that way they can get updates from me on their phone, uh, they can get alert messages from me on their phone, or they can even get an assignment or a warm up on their phone. So um, it's kind of just a, you know, another nice way to communicate. Um, you know, messages do go to their phone, but uh, the nice thing about Edmodo is I don't see their, their phone number, it's, it's uh, private. Um, same way they can select a, to have email updates, but once again, I don't get their email address. It's all through the, the Edmodo site, so all that's you know, kept private and professional. Um, Rio has submitted an answer back to me. Did you have one that time? That's one. Okay. If some of you are familiar with Facebook, it's, it's kind of you know, similar to a Facebook type of style. Uh, last year we were at a scholars bowl meet and I was sitting by, by Ashlyn Fisher and, and I was telling her how I'd, I'd just gotten an iPhone and had gotten on Facebook and I was proud of that and, and then Ashlyn turned to me and she said, well, well Mr. Belt, my grandparents are on Facebook. <laughs> Twitter's the new thing, so maybe, maybe at some point they'll go to more of a, a Twitter uh, interface for this. But, but the kids are familiar with this and, and it, it really works well as a, as a communication tool and and uh, you know, allowing them to uh, submit assignments back to me and, and for me to assign, assign work. Um, other features, there's like a quiz feature where I can actually construct quizzes that they can take and they can get feedback uh, right away. Um, there's a polling feature so that if we're in class and maybe I wanna gauge uh, student learning, I can construct a poll and they can uh, give me quick responses back so I can kind of gauge uh, you know, where we're at uh, with material. Um, I've got updates from Skylar here, so I get notifications as well. What happens if they don't have an iPhone? Uh, we have the iPads there in the classroom, um, so uh, most of them just use the iPads that we that we have there. And then if at home they could use their iPhone, they can also get on a computer. It's web based, so they can go to the Edmodo website and log in that way. So, and that's what's kind of nice is there are a lot of different options for um, how they can access the information. Um, you know, I really see this as being something that would be neat. At some point, if we go to a one-to-one to -to -one, uh, type initiative at school, um, uh, where the, you know, the, the kids would have something with them all the time that they could access their classes with. Uh, it's also kind of similar to maybe like Blackboard, if you've ever taken online classes. Uh, colleges use a, you know, a Blackboard uh, format that's very similar to this. So, um, so Skyler sent me back his uh, post. Okay, so he says he's attending the University of Kansas, so I can grade that. So I'll give him a point. I guess I'm not a big Kansas fan. I guess I'll, I guess I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and grade him and give him one out of one. Uh, that's, that's more than generous. <laughs> so that's kind of neat too. I can, you know, I can uh, grade their assignments on here, and they can they can get them right back. And, and this isn't the only platform that we use. Uh, we do use it for warm-ups. Uh, when kids come to my class, they're posed with a question that I, that I ask them, and they submit that online to me. Um, and they like that because they don't have to carry around as many papers and things like that. That's, that's the big plus, is we don't have a whole bunch of papers with warm-ups for the week in our, in our binders. But um, I was going to tell them, mm -hmm. we, get to, we get to tell Mr. Dump what we thought of that assignment. There's different emoticons for it. So uh, we get to let them know if we liked it or not. <laughs> um, one other nice feature on Edmodo is, uh, you know, I can post for the week uh, the, the schedule, uh, so it's all laid out for them. And, you know, if that changes, I can update it right away so that they get those updates and, and know how it might have changed. This shows all my classes that are on Edmodo. Uh, theirs would just show the, the classes that they're in, enrolled for. That way they can get new dates, they can uh, know what we're going to be doing that week. You know, if they would be gone to like a track meet or miss class for some reason, they can still access that information. Um, I was gone to a conference a few weeks ago and um, some students had a question about something they were doing in class, so they were able to, to uh, you know, pose a question to me and I was able to attach some supporting documents and send it back to them and then they were able to, to go ahead and do uh, that assignment. So, so it's, it's nice that way just as a, as a communication tool. Once again. 
Um, so that's uh, Edmodo, that's one way that we're using uh, the iPads in my classroom. Uh, another way that we're using it uh, in physics is with this video physics app. And I'm gonna let uh, Skyler talk a little, about, a little bit about the, the video physics app. Um, okay, so this video physics app, it, uh, it lets us take videos of say, us dropping a ball, and we get to plot certain data points with the following ball of the ground. And we can set scales, and it'll automatically tell us velocity, height at a certain point, and uh, I mean just how fast the ball was going, and how high it was when it was so many feet from the ground. So, uh, and the, the nice thing about this app is uh, we can actually, we can work out the equations and determine it uh, that way, like velocity, speed, distance, those types of things. Uh, but then we can back up what we uh, found out in the equation with the actual data from the video. So um, we'll really show you how that works. You see that? Yeah. Oh, I need to get the get out of the way. <laughs> Go. Okay, so I'm plug there, Sky. Is it really? So we're going to use this video. Should we plug back in? There, there it is. And uh, you can set a certain axis where you want your x and your y axis to be. You can move that around. And another thing is uh, you can you can trace with your finger there at the bottom where you are in the video. So you can trace right where he drops the ball. And we'll just set our x and y axis right here. Now scale. You got a meter stick held up there. So plot that. Plot that right there. See it says scale right there. One meter. Now we're going to plot our points. So what I like to do is if it's not very fast, you can skip frames and uh, so you don't have to plot a whole bunch of points. So skip four frames right there, and then four more. Right there. Now, we play this video back to play it with our points in there. And if you messed up on a point, you can get it to where they're highlighted yellow. It just takes a little while. But you can delete all the points. You can leave them like that, but I'm not going to. It's going to take forever. But then you can open everything in a graph and look at uh, your X and Y height how high it is off the ground, and uh, how far it is away from where he started. You look at, should look at velocities. Down here at the bottom, they have time, and your x velocity, and your x height. And we have another app that uh, you'll be shown that in yeah, app. Just, yeah. sure. We can open it at another, another graphical app, and it helps a lot with finding points at a certain time. And you can trace. You can trace just about everything. But uh, this helps you figure out x and y velocities the easy way. But he still makes us do it the hard way. <laughs> he still makes us pull out our calculators and our pencils and do everything the hard way. But uh, I think when I took physics, we used stopwatches a lot. You had to just time everything just right, and it seemed like the the uh, equations never turned out quite like the experiment. Uh, just because of, of uh, measurement errors, but with this we can we can get pretty close to, to what the equations uh, tell us so uh, the look. motion should be. I wonder if there's a better video on here. If, well, that's somebody that messed up with that. There we go. This is something we did first semester. I don't remember what we were doing, but uh, here's a here's a plot, here's a projectile video. And it just it shows it shows the complete trajectory 
of, I think it was an eraser that we threw. And it should tell us how high that thing went, if our scale was right. And it'll show us the complete trajectory there. And it was, say, it ended up all about two meters off the ground. So uh, we can do that, and then we can measure it in the video too. But that's one thing that we've been doing. It makes it makes it a lot easier to find data. And what we do is he makes us do it the hard way, and then we compare everything with uh, with the data we gather here. But, uh, that's one thing. That we've been doing. So that's uh, two ways that we've been, been using the iPads. And uh, I also have some LabQuest uh, data probes that we're getting more and more probes that we can add uh, to the uh, lab. And uh, those have been nice as well. So um, are there any questions that you have about the iPads or the, the things that you heard about that we're working on in the classroom? Maybe not uh, iPads, but have you been playing air hockey? Air hockey, yeah, we, a little bit. They were a little disappointed. It wasn't quite what they thought uh, well, air hockey would be. Some of us didn't get to do it because we're <laughs> for time. <laughs> but yes, we did have an air hockey table in there. Yeah. I saw it being built. So that's, that's okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Skylar, it was all good except for the KU part. <laughs> <laughs> You're from Oklahoma. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, facilities improvement project. Um, you recall on the, the resolution, uh, we didn't get that done in, uh, in the right time frame, so. Really, in the end, it pushes us back one week of where we would be uh, after talking with Clark. Um, so our meeting in May, we got a couple of choices. We can, uh, we can just uh, reschedule our regular meeting for that second week. We can have our meeting on the first week and then come back with a special meeting uh, on that second week. So. Um, we'll likely have to have a meeting in between now and then for financing to get that uh, decision made so that can be all ready to go. So um, we'll need to make a decision on that right now, but uh, uh, on the, whether the first week or just regular meeting on the second week. But, um, I'm going to turn over here uh, to Clark and, uh, uh, and Alan. Uh, let him have the floor here. I need some room here. Yeah, what I've you got is here. these are, and I've got brought a couple of sets of drawings of what we're going to put out to bed. These are half size sets, and those are so that you guys can kind of look through them. And then if anybody wants, that's the spec book that goes with them. Uh, and the specifications essentially are the instructions to the bidders and the detail of specifically or what we're asking for or what we're wanting. To, to undertake. Uh, what I want to, I guess, there's, well, let's go take a step back. Let's talk about what we're doing in the package here. As you recall, we're going to remodel the uh, eight restrooms in the building, or the, the four groups of uh, pairs of restrooms, uh, as part of our base bit. That's the uh, elementary. Well, I'm going to call them the East Elementary because it's the ones at the east end of the elementary wing. Then there's the uh, restrooms at the west end of the elementary ring, or wing. There's the high school girls restroom. And part of this is we're going to do some other remodels that will actually add a boys restroom at the high school. And then we'll remodel the restrooms at the middle school. Now, when we say middle school, think yeah. junior high. Yeah, junior high. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, should I? I, I <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to remember where I'm at. That's all right. <laughs> the junior high, the, the restroom's yeah. across from the gym. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, the main gym. <laughs> the main yeah. gym. That, that work is all base bit. We're also going to remodel the classroom there that's on the uh, 
west side of the uh, south entrance there to the elementary to move the district office into that space. And then we'll also be doing a little bit of work in the two classrooms that are, or the what used to be the old library that was converted to two classrooms. We're correcting the issue the fire marshal had cited you on on that wall as part of that. That's all part of your base bid in the project. Then if you want to flip to sheet uh, A1.3, 1.3 shows the alternates. Uh, those are the pieces that we're going to be bidding as an alternate. Uh, the first alternate we have is to take that outside corridor there by the elementary uh, and, and convert it and that be H1 drawing on the sheet. That is to enclose that space, put a roof on the wall since we can create a storage room. That is the, and we're going to bid that as an alternate bid separate so that it's not included in the base so you have an option to take just doing that. Then H2, the drawing next to it, we're going to bid doing the, that work but adding a restroom so you can see what it would add to that cost to put a restroom that could be used as a staff restroom in that end of the building. These are, and by bidding it that way, this is work that if you have money and want to undertake, you can do it, but you don't have to. It just it's to break out the pricing so that you know what it costs to do that. Then the third alternate was to redo the locker rooms there in the main gym in terms of plumbing fixtures and finishes. And as we got into it, one of the things that in discussing with Josh that we went back because of updating shower heads or fixtures, we are putting in uh, partitions or, or dividers to make those instead of gang showers to individual showers. Uh, sort of a privacy, hopefully then they may get used a little more than they do if they're in gang showers. But that's all part of that alternate. Um, And that's, and, and then kind of, one of the things I want to mention that out of that scope of work is one of the things that we have not included in the scope of work was while we were up here, we uncovered the, or the issue in the ceiling of the, uh, well, I'm going to call it the boys' basement locker room and that. Uh, that is not included in any of this. I just want you, in case, so nobody thinks that it is, but. There was an issue that we uncovered that I had sent some no, uh, information to Josh about that at some point you'll need to look at addressing, but that's not included in this scope. Uh, what we've done calendar-wise, so you're aware, is we have on April 22nd set up for a pre-bid. And uh, what we're doing is, is we're going to require, at least at this point in time, your general contractor, your mechanical, which will do your plumbing and, and HVA, or exhaust essentially in the restrooms, and your electrical contractors to be present. Part of that's to force them to show up and maybe look at the building before they bid it. At, the, at least that's how I have it right now, is I've got it that that's a mandatory uh, requirement for those that want to bid those portions. We've talked about it, and I think one thing we will do is after that pre-bid, based on that day, we may determine, because you have the right to waive that requirement to make it mandatory. My concern, and I, it's a sort of one they call a double-edged sword, if we don't make it mandatory, potentially you can have more contractors want to look at it or bid it. The catch is, if they, if they haven't been here to look at it, will they give you a good bid? Will they really grasp the scope of the work? So there's pros and cons with re making it a required pre-bid. And my usual approach to it is, because of how we've written the front end of the documents saying that you reserve all rights to change or, or anything in the, the bidding requirements, you have a right to weigh that and say, this contractor, we know that they're a good company, they weren't able to make it, they've come by at another time, we'll allow them to bid, you can accept their bid. That's, I want, I guess you to be aware, that's typically what we'll do is after that pre-bid and we get a list of those that were here, we'll make a determination and I'll put out an addenda answering any questions that came up during that pre-bid 
will usually make a statement whether or not that's waived at that point in time. So uh, I wanted to make you, uh, I guess, aware of, or be informed a little bit about what we're doing there. We have the bid set for May 8th at 2 o'clock. Uh, typically, we always like to bid them after lunch. Uh, that just seems to be the, the key time. Uh, we have the bids will be turned in. Right now, I haven't been turned into the district office, essentially. Uh, my thought would be is normally uh, we, we recommend that you just have a public opening. Uh, you know, you can come over here to the library, come you know, downstairs or any, any room to me and just open the bids, read them aloud. We will have a form. We'll be here to record them. And then just if contractors are present that are curious about it, which they've heard it publicly, then you ask them to leave, and then you, then you can actually address or do something with it. Then that following Monday, this will be a Thursday afternoon. That's typically what, and, and the reason we like to do it a few couple of days before the board meeting is, or do it like on Thursday, is if there's any issue or peculiarity in the bid, that gives me a little bit of time to to contact the bidders and to see if we can verify if there's a question about something they included in the bid or didn't include. That gives us a little time so that if you do it Monday afternoon and, and oh you know try to act on a Monday night, if there's any question about anything, it doesn't give you any time to react. So that's the reason we've done it that way. Um, the other thing is, is if you look in the spec book in section uh, 004100 is the bid form. On the bid form, I'm asking there's essentially going to be two base bids. The first base bid is the scope of work we described. I'm going to have the contractor give a price for that work and give me a date that he'll have it completed. Then I'm going to take an alternate base bid, same as we have scope of work, but we're going to tell them they have to have the work done by August 15 and have them give, me a, have them give us a price to have it done by that date. We know we'd like to get the work done over the summer, but I'm doing this so that you know because of our short time frame, are you paying a premium for squeezing that completion? And that gives you the opportunity to say, you know, we might be able to say, once we know who the low bidder is or who we want to work with, we might be willing to work, have four of the restrooms done over the summer and, you know, take two of them and have those done two weeks after school starts or something like that. Gives you a little play in the time frame to negotiate with them so that you can get a more favorable cost. And again, we're just trying to work to find the most efficient bid for you to be able to complete the scope of work. By, I'm hoping by doing that, that will allow you the opportunity to accept those alternates because we've given some room in the budget to do everything. Um, yeah, that's really the gist. Is there any real questions about the scope of what we're undertaking, or uh, we're, I mean, we're really, essentially I'm ready to, get, to print it and hand it out in the morning. I just want to make sure you guys, the scope as we put together, everybody's on pace for that and dates work. <coughs> uh, and what goes along with this are the things that we've, uh, you know, on, on our own outside of what Clark sure. is doing here is with our fire alarm. Um, sure. We don't have to do that all at once. Um, we do have to get that up to code and, and be a battery backup system. Uh, but we don't have to bring every single pole sure. station and uh, add smoke, uh, smoke detectors and all of those things all at once. So uh, they'll let us do that in phases and that's my recommendation. So we're looking at more like 14,000 to get that going. Get that started. Um, and, and one thing I will mention, they do have included in here is the district office where we're remodeling or any of the spaces. They've taken care of, you know, any smoke detectors or any of that. Okay. I mean, typically, especially where you've changed occupancy in that one classroom, they have notations in, in on their right. documents to make sure the space that we're working in would be compliant. Okay. And I always have to be careful because that was one of the things that, and they thought you had some spare space in, your, in the current panel for adding a couple of additional devices. Okay. 
but we want to make sure and kind of keep that in mind and coincide that kind of work. Right. The other option, other item, just so you're aware of, is by putting, we're going to change out the inner set of doors at that south entrance to the uh, elementary wing and put a new doors there so that I can make those doors locked and secured. And we're also setting the hardware up to work so that at some point in the future, Josh can add a uh, keypad or a card reader for those doors. We're, we're prepping them so that it's ready to add. We just didn't include that because you have a working agreement with a company that can do that for you. And but we're just we're going to have the doors ready for that when they go in. Um, also, the track, I think I updated you in one of my weekly notes about uh, the grant. We did not receive the grant. Maybe I put it in the, we didn't get that grant for the uh, waste tire program, so the plan is to not proceed with the resurfacing of the track yet. Um, and then the uh, HVAC, uh, uh, we're kind of in, on hold to say, to choose those bids with our financing situation. Uh, same reason we have. We were put off with uh, another week with this. We have, we can't say yes until uh, we know we can borrow the money. So I don't see any problems with that. It's just the timing. Okay. And on the in your <coughs> packet there, there's the three three out of these facilities. Just as a reminder, there's a fire alarm uh, uh, quote there, and uh, then the total planned improvements adjusted, and then what Clark gave us some time ago about the estimates. I just wanted to make sure you had those there if you needed to reference those. And because we kind of gave you a range, we're probably in the middle towards the upper side based on the where the work is at, where we see you right now. Uh, one of them, part of it has to do a little bit with the well, cost of what's happening with materials. The other is finishes and things like that. We're, we Because we are redoing all the finishes. We've added some partitions that we didn't have in there. So that, that'll put us to that upper side. But I, you know, I still feel like unless we see a hiccup in the market, the numbers should still be good. That's the, the boys' restroom that are underneath the uh, bleachers. About that there. elementary office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there at the west end of the elementary wing as you go towards the uh, be the north to go out the to the courtyard. Is that is there only one sink down there? Yeah, there's currently just so one sink. Yeah, and what we're the, doing is we're just taking in that room, we're just removing the fixtures that are there and putting new fixtures and new controls and then redoing finishes in the room and re, redoing the stalls. So that's just more of a cosmetic. Okay. And and part of the reason we didn't do anything to make ADA like we did at the the girls restroom at that west end was because of the ramp at the doorway does not meet ADA there's no reason to alter fi fixtures when they can't get in the technically the ramps too steep to meet ADA requirements so that's a physical condition that we can't alter uh, it's a seven inch drop and four feet and that's mm -hmm. too steep <laughs> So, Clark, yep. each uh, each page, each diagram is going to have its own bid. No. How does that work? What well, we'll, each diagram is a is a portion of the work. Mm -hmm. Sheet A one point three is the alternates. We broke those on a separate page so that we can when we describe them in the spec book, there's a page a section in there that describes alternates. They know specifically what is included in the alternate, and. Uh, so each alternate is going to have each alternate will have a price. There'll be three of them. There'll be the storage room by itself. Then there'll be the storage room with adding the restroom. And the reason I did did it that way is, if you do just the restroom price, that forces you to have to take the storage room. Well, it depends on how contractors take it off. My concern was is some may or may not include that. And so the easiest way is okay price this, or price this, that storage space, but then add this additional work to it. So you have you either take A1 or you take A2 or you don't take either one. You don't take A1 with A2. 
because A2 includes A1. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's so that we, and that's one of the things why we want to have the pre-bed is to try to go talk to them so they make sure and understand that because that's typically contractors when you, you'll tell them that they'll look at it. It's fairly obvious, but invariably when it comes bid day, you'll have somebody mess that up, <laughs> and that's why we want some time to, to make sure we clarify any of those kind of questions before we accept the bid. Then the third alternate will be the locker rooms, which again is straightforward as the price by itself. So in the end, we'll have the base bid yeah. to do everything, not without the alternates. Right. And then the secondary base bid to get it done then by... By August 15th. A certain date. Yeah. And then the three alternates. Yeah, three alternates. And, and, I, and the reason I went ahead and called it sort of alternate ba and left it as a base is we aren't really changing the scope. The only difference was I wanted the contractor to tell me what the price would be if he could set the completion and then I wanted to tell him I want the work done by the state, you give me a price. Again, because of our short time frame, this could be thirty or $40,000 difference between those. That might be enough money you might be willing to consider allowing if you have the right contractor to accept a longer time frame and work with because one of the things will be, if you do accept the alternates, technically that will adjust that time frame. The alternates really, at least the storage room and that restroom can be done after school starts because it doesn't affect anything inside the building. And honestly, we really don't want them starting on that and taking away from getting the restrooms in the building done because that's our real goal is to get that part done so you're ready for the start of school. And that's, again, we're trying to structure it to get you the most work in the shortest time and give you some flexibility so that you get good numbers. So on that base bid, will they give you a time frame when they'll be done? With yeah, it? they'll give me calendar days it will take them for the first one, and then we, we tell them, this, and, if, and it's probably easier if you just look at so what happens if they don't get done in time? There's liquidated damages. There's a $300 a day penalty if they don't complete it on time. Uh, $300 a day. Huh? $300 a day. So uh, are we replacing any windows in with all this? We are in the uh, e e or the west, no, the east, I'm sorry, the east, the what I call the elementary restaurants. <laughs> Those steel windows that were uh, single quarter inch glass are being replaced with a uh, insulated, uh, what I'm going to call cowl or translucent panel, obscure glazing, so that it, it, it'll, it'll actually help those restrooms. Mm -hmm. The others had the, already had glass block or things in it, but we didn't, we didn't, we didn't really go to, to address. They want, those were the ones that I noticed were thermally probably the most insignificant. I think everywhere else had glass blocks, so it's it's better, but not a lot better. <laughs> so who said the price on three hundred dollars? Is that just what normally? Is well, that's or? typically. I can adjust if you want me to change it. I can change that tomorrow morning before we go to press. Is there another number you want to put in there? The catch with a well, how we've got it set up. And this is one of those where your lawyers get involved, but you have to be able to prove that there's it has cost you a certain value if they don't complete it on time. If the number is not out of line, then typically most of them aren't going to argue or press the point. Uh, I, but I have had some, you know, we've gone 500. I I don't know of too many that we've gone a thousand a day. Um, where does which, it say three hundred dollars? It's in the, the general conditions. It's in the there's the contract itself is in the book. Oh, it's not on. It's not on the bid form. It's, okay. Yeah, right. it's right. you, actually, you right. actually have your contract in here. I was and, just looking. For yeah, and it's spelled out That's in there. And I, can't, I, I That's all right. I, <laughs> yeah. I was just looking for a three hundred on here. No, it's we well we used to put it on there, but it's also in the contract, and so instead of putting it two locations, if we change it, I don't want to have to change right. it but one place. And forget to change it the other. Way. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Sometimes it could cause problems too if you put it too high and then they try to rush through it. 
to get it done so they don't have to pay that penalty and they need to that bill. Oh. That's perfect. Yeah. That's how works. Sorry. That's how I shut it off. Yeah. Are we having something behind me? <laughs> the ball. No, that was her study. Was her study. Uh, I don't know. I'm, it's a new phone. I don't know to get on. We're <laughs> skydiving. <laughs> 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 uh, it's over. I still want to call you in. Uh, uh, iPhones are not what they're cracked up to be. <laughs> Mr. Dell. <laughs> the key is the little button right there at the top, that cancels out. That's what I want. That's, <laughs> that's all I want. want. Oh, it's only because I've been in enough meetings to know I can do it without opening it out of my Well, computer. I see these guys hitting something, and I thought, well, it's got to be pretty easy, and I thought I'd shut it off, but I didn't, apparently. So. Yeah, if you want, I, that's really, that's our norm just to, for this type of work. Now, there's two things that I've always believed in if we have a good contractor and that they are legitimately working to get done if we miss it a day or two you know usually we don't try to stick but if they're I had one project that they were a month late we tended to apply as much of that time as we could and now they're you know usually if there's something that they in a remodel then cover that's unforeseen we may have to adjust the time schedule but that's the one of the drawbacks is when you as, you, as you said, you set that too high, that's that will actually enunciate that difference between the August 15th and having them set the finish date. Because typically, if they don't think they can meet that August 15th date, they'll add however much time they think it's going to take times the liquidated damages and pad that sum to, to cover the cost. Is there a bond? Uh, yes, there's a labor and material payment bond, there's a bid bond, and there's a performance bond in this document. The uh, bid bond is turned in when they bid. Once you accept the contractor, they'll furnish you a labor and material payment bond and a performance bond. Learned a lot through the economic yeah. development. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Just wish we had the money just stashed in our pocket to do all this. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the project here? So April twenty second, pre bids due. Yeah, we'll May, have we'll May have final bids. May eighth is when you'll actually have the bids. Two o'clock that afternoon, we'll know how it came in. And we have to open it in public meeting. Right? Well, because you don't have to. I recommend you do that. Just it foresees any. Issues. Of, if you have local guys that are, want to bid any portion of this work, if you have an electrician in town, or I know there's one in Stafford that I think is going to want to look at it. By opening in a public, then you know they can't say, "Well, you just gave it to so and so." Well, no, it, it was open and read. Not necessarily uh, called. It's it's board not a meeting, board meeting. But it, it's, what it's it's a it's a it's just a what I call a wedding in that typically. Well, because of your board, you can have I think two board members there and not have to worry about it. Usually, it's the, your superintendent and then one of your board members that want to be there just out of informational basis. Because we'll open it, we'll record it on a document, then we'll furnish you that document for your board meeting, along with any questions that we uncover. We'll try to get answers to those so that when you act on it Monday night, you have all the information you need. But by reading it by Opening them and reading them aloud in public, that just that caught, you know, that just alleviates any question mm -hmm. that, you know, anything was not done properly. That's just, I'm a firm believer and this is, you know, we're not trying to hide anything, do anything. We're just, if you've got a question, ask and we'll address it. On this one paper, it says uh, Boys High School demo plan. Are we, we're demoing the restroom downstairs. They're going to they're going to just remove the fixtures in the basement. And part of that, when we move, when we do the restroom upstairs, to alleviate some of the pressure on your water system in the building, we want to remove those fixtures. We're not going to okay. change the locker room because we're replacing those upstairs. We want to just alleviate that fixture okay. count in the building. And that's, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing is we're just going to pull those out. 
because I think there's there's still sinks and toilets in the locker room itself. Anything else for Clark? Miss is retiling. Retiling yeah. in the gyms, or I mean in the restroom. Rest, yeah, yes, we're going ceramic <laughs> tile, floor to ceiling, and then we're actually going to we're going to go with a uh, a poured floor surface instead of doing mosaic tiles like you have. We're actually going to do a, a uh, resin or a poured floor in its place. Mm -hmm. That'll be a monolithic floor. Can we stain it? Well, actually, it'll have a color oh, palette okay. to it. It'll look kind of like terrazzo when it's done, but it's doesn't. You know, it's not the cost of terrazzo. <laughs> uh, in fact, if anybody's been, well, it'll be similar to the product that we just we put in the fax lab there at Stafford. In terms of, it'll it'll have flake color flakes within a background color. Any other questions? Anybody? Mr. Mark, anyone? Nope. I need to read this financing, but it's not uh, for Clark, I guess. But. Okay. Thanks, Clark. Do you want these no, back? Those are yours. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. You can take those home and look at them if you want. <laughs> All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. We'll be in touch. So. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, on the financing, um, I've talked to St. John National Bank, uh, American State Bank, and uh, another outfit in Bell Plain because I know they do this type of lease purchase financing. So I have a couple of questions for this board. Uh, what we'll need to do is is request proposals from these financing institutions, and I want to be very specific about that, about what uh, we might be asking for. Um, so the first question is, should we request proposals from all three, uh, or does this board want to definitely use one of the two local banks? Uh, because I don't want, if we know that's the way we're going to go, we're going to go local even if it's a little bit higher interest rate. There's no sense in wasting their time in Belle Plaine or my time to deal with them. Uh, and it's not a huge issue. Um, Is there a cost? No. For proposals? No. No, not at all. No. So the... Should we send out uh, proposals to all three, or uh, who did you say again? Uh, American State Bank and St. John National, and uh, okay. I can't quote you the name of the bank. Valley State Bank in Belt Plain. And the reason, again, the reason I called them is because I know they've done some lease purchase financing with schools. So. I'd like to get proposals from all three. Okay. Person. Any other <coughs> input? Okay. Um, the other thing is how we request these proposals. Uh, uh, talking with uh, American State Bank, uh, we can go with a 10-year fixed rate, which would be the full term. Uh, we know what the interest rate is going to be for the whole 10 years. Uh, they could do a little bit better on the interest rate if we went for five years with the fixed rate and then renegotiate for the second five years. So what that would do is that would save us some money on interest costs, but then the risk is, in that second five years, what's going to happen to that interest rate? And we don't know that. Um, so that risk would be on us for the interest rate for the second five years. Um, also, we would need that some way to assure that it's under our maximum of what we've published in the resolution. If there's going to be any variability in that interest, that if we're at, toward the maximum end of that, of what we're, uh, what we've put in that resolution, we can't go over that interest cost dollar amount that we put in that resolution. Well, was uh, I couldn't read it. <laughs> it's on our website. Um, uh, I don't know what it is, what the dollar amount is off the top of my head. I can look it up. But if you went for a 10-year fix, you could pay it off early and still save a little bit of money. 
Uh, it depends on how it's structured. But that could be an option in the structure. Mm -hmm. That way we have the best, you know, we got a definite stand underneath our price. Right. But yeah, we could save a little bit if we had to get some extra money. I think we ought to ask all three of them for both the two sides. proposals. Well, and honestly, we can do both. Okay. Yeah. And I want to be very specific about what we're asking for so we can compare apples to apples. What I don't want to say is, hey, give us your best offer. You give us your best offer, and then we don't know how to compare them. So, on, uh, those are the only two options that I've been presented with so far. So, and there's probably a dozen ways to do this. But, uh, so you don't want them, want them to give us our, their best offer, or what? Well, I, I do want the best offer. What I don't want is somebody else to come in and say, "Well, how about three years, and then we'll renegotiate." Yeah, he somebody else says five us. years, and. And, so they'll do and it both ways. Kind of no, mm -hmm. and we don't want this. This outfit says ten years, but if you pay it off early, there's a penalty. And the other outfit says, well, ten years fixed, paid off whenever you want. So we want to be very specific about that. Yeah. Mr. Martin. Yes, ma'am. The amount, uh, the principal amount on the resolution is nine hundred and fifty-five thousand. The interest amount is two hundred and thirty-three thousand eight hundred and seventeen dollars for a total of one million one hundred and eighty-eight thousand eight hundred and seventeen dollars. And I'm not, I'm not sure how that would, have, you know, if we were at the top end of that, there would be some risk there of if the interest rate goes up in our second five years, uh, we might be going over that cost. But I don't think we're going to be at that top end. I'm, Almost certain we're not going to be at that top end. So. Just curious, what interest rate is used to figure that two hundred and some thousand interest? Yeah. What four and a half roughly? Was that mm -hmm. what it was? Okay, I was just wondering. If I had my iPad knew how to run it. I, you know. You want an know, iPhone? You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart enough. Well, you know, interest is going to go up. Something's got to. Well, it's not going to hurt anything to get the two different proposals. But, yeah. uh, so, while I'm here, we'll get the, those two proposals and uh, from all three institutions. And, uh, I will get back with you on when, uh, time frame-wise, we need to get together and make that decision. Uh, I was hoping we could just do it when we uh, take the bids, uh, when we meet to accept the bids, but we really need to have that lined out so we can be ready to go with the money and we accept the bids and they can get going as soon as possible. So I have a quick special meeting maybe one morning to decide this. Okay. I can't give you a firm timeline now because I don't know how long they need to get that together. So that sounds fair on the financing. I will do you, get back. Do you, want, do you want a time frame for early payoff? Uh, I would like to see if that's an option. I mean, maybe well, after, after five years you can pay off. I don't want to be penalized well, for it. I, you well, I, I, I wouldn't want, want to be going to happen, guys. We well, might, you as a might not be in the existence in five years. But then if you do that, then you got to raise your mills more to be able to do it. Because why be collecting more money into our capital outlay for... You might have someone die and leave you $2 million. You don't know what's going to happen. Any time now, Tom? Yeah. I mean, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm yeah. just being a devil's advocate. Yeah. Yeah. That could happen. Usually there's either a nerve payoff clause or not. Okay. Go for it. Well, I could ask them to bid uh, what's your rate with no early payoff and what's the rate with? You just need to give all three banks apples to apples to those what you want. Okay. So I, I think I can easily ask for give me two different rates if it's 10 year fixed. What? Mm -hmm. 
what if we pay it off early and what if we don't? And then the uh, other option with the five years. Okay. And if there's something else, too bad, this is it. <laughs> Okay, good enough. I know where to head now. On to summer maintenance projects. Uh, you have a short list here. Uh, we're not going to try to, uh, things like uh, the flooring, um, we're not going to try to tackle m much else besides our, our big project with the, the restrooms and locker rooms and everything. There's a few things. Our football ticket booth on the uh, south end is in bad shape. Um, it's rotten. It, we need a new one. So build or purchase a new one there. Uh, that kitchen freezer area, it, we need to do something with that. Um, the expansion joints in the gym floors it doesn't seem like a fairly big project, but it's one of those things that needs taken care of. Our terrazzo floor, uh, I think uh, those, those cracks that we've had, I think the wax has held that uh, epoxy or uh, the, whatever compound is in the, the joints there for years. So uh, now that we've been cleaning it every day and uh, uh, got the wax off of there and the cracks are horrible. So we need to, we need to fix those. Um, the junior senior high entrance near Mr. Bergen's office, that stucco there, and, uh, that entrance we just needs some dressing up. Um, the bushes are going to go, uh, try to get some fill dirt back in there to get drainage right. Uh, if it's real wet, we'll have, we'll have issues of the water seeping through the, the concrete into the, the carpet. So. Um, Talking about all the bushes are going to go? Yeah, pretty much. On the uh, mainly on Broadway there. Yeah. Just a maintenance headache and they're ugly. <laughs> Agree. Yeah. And and maybe at some point find something different to dress up the area. Maybe paint some bushes on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Anything besides white? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. White right. institution. Right. right. And then our various classroom technology, uh, you know, whiteboards and uh, TVs or projectors, things that teachers will request. There's you know, various things that we need to take care of. So I wanted to bring this up, not to tell you all that we were looking at, but to see if there was anything from this group of things that, uh, other things that need attention that I'd like to see taken care of. Sometimes for your information, there is paint that you paint on the walls and it makes it a dry erasable wall. Okay. It's one of the meetings I've gone to. Oh, okay. written all over the walls. So oh, really? If you ever have some rooms hmm. that... You just have to remember to use dry erasable right. markers. But right. Hmm. Another thing we're looking at is putting a platform above, uh, behind the scores table in the gym. On that top row, there's a media table there. I'm uh, putting a platform there for filming. You know, it's about four feet lower than on the deck. But then that person's out of the way uh, to film instead of standing up on the deck. We'll have to walk around. Nobody can sit behind them because you can't see anything. So uh, we'll just move the table to one side or the other. So something we're looking at doing. You're just going to put the platform there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To film with anything around it? Or? No, because it'll just be. Uh, I'm sure you can get by with that? Yeah. Well, no, I'll ask. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Oh, oh shit. Sure. Yeah. Well, it'll safety, be. Safety, safety. Well, it'll it's be. Got a book on there then. It'll be. Uh, you'll level with the top row of bleachers. So it's not oh. going to be up real high. Oh. So it'll be down a little bit where they're out of the way high enough where they can still film. But, yeah. So it's not like it's going to be way up high where we need to... Well, I think it'll be way up high, but just... Yeah. First. yeah, it won't be as high as the deck is. So you might check in on that. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, if, if there is, uh, you know, just let me know if there's things that 
little things that need to be taken care of that you like to see. Whose responsibility is the asphalt from Pearl Street into the back of the school and you know where it dips down over the fence? Where the alley is, you know? Yeah. Between that dip and the alley, or yeah. dip and the street, mm -hmm. Pearl Street. Right. I don't know the answer to that. Carl's wanting to know whose responsibility that is. Here? Well, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. It's just yeah. always rough. Mm -hmm. And then when nobody's claiming it. <laughs> yeah. Um. There is an alley there, isn't there? There is. Mm -hmm. So the trash truck goes down the alley and around. I think so. It's like city. You know, it depends on, I guess, you know, they close it. They used to be a street through there, and they close the street, and they did addition of the shop building, and I don't know, you know, how they left it, how the city left it. Mm -hmm. If they left it closed, then that's probably our responsibility. Kind of like on the other side of the school. Well, only half of it would be our responsibility. Half of it would be the owner, the owner, the homeowner yeah. over there in the south. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get a bonus. You get extra. <laughs> Any other maintenance projects you want to talk about? Okay, parents as teachers. We uh, discussed it last meeting. Has there been any update this morning? No, there's been some money committed, uh, uh, but not. Uh, not even half. So, um, my recommendation is to, to continue with this motion to discontinue funding. If they would happen to round up the money, it could still happen. You know, this motion doesn't eliminate the program, it just eliminates the funding for the program. So, again, I'm not opposed to the program, uh, just in our funding priorities. I don't think it fits. So, like we've talked about the last couple of months, so, uh, again, this motion would prevent that from happening. So, if money does get come together, they can still continue the program. And what day would they have to have that? It, it just, it just really between uh, depends on Stafford and whether they're going to put the grant together without us. Um, so I think here at the end of this month that grant is due. Um, so really, it's <coughs> that becomes not our concern. Sure. If we're not funding it, if they want to try to fund it, then we can do it for them. Okay. Um, at the last meeting, there was a motion on the floor, made by Barb, second by Lance. Um, we should have voted on it, but we decided to table it until this meeting. Um, has there been any further discussion or any more thoughts on this topic? <coughs> um, if not, Barb, um, would you like to leave your motion out there? As is, as stated, yes. Okay. Um, it was moved and seconded at the last meeting to uh, defund the Parents as Teachers program for the 13-15, or excuse me, 14-15 school year. Is there any more discussion? You need to talk yet? If you would, second. Okay. All in favor of uh, defunding the program, raise your right hand. Opposed nay. Motion carried 6 0. Okay. Facility use request fee waiver. Uh, board policy requires that uh, um, those who are not 
um, involved in school activities. Um, when we use our facility, they have to submit an application, uh, get permission, and then there's a fee associated with that. Uh, the policy gives this board the opportunity to waive that fee if you choose. Cindy Crockett is asked to use the football field uh, for the community-wide Easter egg hunt. Uh, since it's a community event, everybody's invited. Uh, it's an event for the community, but I think we should waive that fee. Um, Mr. Burgundy, do you recall what that fee was? 120, 125 an hour. Okay. Uh, so you're probably looking at a couple hours. And so uh, they're not doing this to make money or anything. They're just doing it to have the event. So uh, you see my recommendation there to waive the fee? Mr. President, I move that the board waive the fee for Cindy Crockett, waive the fee for Cindy Crockett to use football field on April 12th. Second. Moved and seconded to waive the fee for Cindy Crockett to use football field for Easter egg hunt on April 12th. Any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. 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 Motion carried 6 0. Moving on to communications, board member activities report. Uh, start with you, Stan. I have nothing. Barb? I have a meeting and I missed it. So I don't know what PDC did. <laughs> Sorry. Failing my duties. Tom, I don't have anything. I have nothing. I have nothing. Okay. I attended the South Central Co op. Meeting by phone. Uh, the big issue continues to be the health care coming up next year. It's looking at costing $950,000 for the co op for one year. I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. So, if we have people that have waived out of the insurance, we still have to pay into the co op, or we only have to pay for the people that were hired? them for school to be working the, here. The, the cost of health insurance for the cooperative has nothing to do with, well, our share of that has nothing to do with how many of our people take it. You know, we pay a percentage of the costs for the cooperative, and that cost is spread out percentage-wise based on our enrollment. So even if we have zero pairs take the health insurance, it's still a cost to the co-op for everybody else. We still have to chip in for that. So, but if they have, like, out of, I don't know what there is, 300 and some pairs or whatever, and only 100 of them take it, we still have to pay the same amount? No, no, that's, that's an estimate for, you know, the numbers that are being quoted aren't actual costs, they're estimated costs. So if, if people choose not to take the insurance because they have insurance with their spouse or for whatever reason they don't take it. We don't pay for that. Okay. But we won't know until the school year right. at that point. What right. is it? 24, 2016? Yeah. Right. Actually until yeah. Right. So those numbers are being quoted out as so they can budget for for the upcoming year and the year after. And we don't have, the co-op has chosen not to cover the pairs right away. That can be postponed until October of 2015. But the group of superintendents, it's our direction to them that don't do it all next year, do a little bit this coming year as far as assessing us extra costs. Do a little bit this year and then we'll be at the full amount the following year. So that money doesn't just get wasted, you know. If there's extra money there, that will in the co-op that'll reduce our assessment down the road. Okay. And part of the issue is they've spent down their cash. It probably, over the last decade, it would have been better if we would have been assessed a little bit more each year, rather than coming to this point and we have a huge increase. But if they don't use it, we still, they're not just going to, we still have the option of being assessed later. 
lower. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Huge challenge ahead, which directly affects us. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. And they have the same challenge as us in, with cost increasing, but you know, state revenues aren't going up. So we're kind of get, getting hit twice. You know, last year, this year, we had no state aid increase. Neither did they. So yeah. our costs go up, their costs go up. And well, I was just curious on the, mm -hmm. the fact that a para, because they don't work the 12-hour month, like a teacher, a mm -hmm. lot of them will have other insurance and probably will opt out. I just wondered if we were expected to pay for the collective or just the ones that actually opt into the insurance. That's what I was curious right. about. Yeah, we will we'll pay actual costs of the insurance, okay. but but yeah, we we share in that like yeah. the other districts. Yeah, I understood okay. that. Okay. I just, I'm when you threw that number out, I was like, well, a lot of them I think will opt out because you know, I'm not the full-time employee. They huh? don't have insurance. Are they? Yeah, I would think so. I think. My bet is they would. Well, it depends on if they're single or a spouse. How the spouse is working. Uh, guess we'll wait and see. Yeah. All right. Uh, administrative reports. <coughs> Mr. Rolls? Um, Tomorrow we are supposed to start state assessments. Um, I've listed the grade levels and subjects that are that will be taking those this year. Um, we've had our kids in the lab trying to do practice tests, and it's kind of been a mess um, at the state level. You know, a lot of it's not our fault. There's days, you know, there's a couple days last week that somebody tried to hack into the the state's server to mess it up so they just had to shut state assessments down statewide for a couple of days and try to fix that problem so we're going to try uh, to start those with fourth grade science tomorrow if it doesn't work out we'll push them back a week but we're hoping that we can get those things uh, done and over with so that's kind of the plan and he'll be taking those uh, April 15th and the next Tuesday our fifth graders will have their graduation in the auditorium at 2.30 or 2.20 I believe um, enrollment numbers, you can see we've uh, added a kindergartner and a second grader since spring break, so our numbers are, are up to from last month. Um, myself and Mr. Meyer attended a career fair at Fort Hay State today, trying to you know visit with some teachers. You know, we have a preschool opening right now, trying to, to maybe catch some of those people and then look it down the road if we, if we would have an opening. So we were able to visit with a few people today. Um, last Thursday and Friday, our math teachers that have been working on the curriculum throughout the year, they kind of almost put the finishing touches on that. They kind of started at kindergarten, read through um, every single thing one by one, then went on to first grade and so on, did the same thing all the way up through Algebra 2 and just kind of picked apart the wording and the formatting of those, trying to get everything how they wanted that to look and they're going to be uh, editing those things kind of on their own I believe this week and I believe the the goal is to by Friday kind of have those edits done and something kind of more complete that we can kind of print off and look at um, and be done with that for the year and then kind of revisit it as the year goes on and see what changes we need to make next year uh, this Thursday we have our kindergarten roundup uh, at the church and then April 25th, be a couple Fridays from now, will be our preschool screenings at the church as well. So a lot of stuff like that coming up. Okay, thank you, Mr. Martin. Mr. Bergen? Um, on the enrollment. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you on your mind there, Joe. Enrollment's pretty much where it has been, I believe, though. It maybe changed one or two students. Um, I just mentioned about our math curriculum we've been working on. I'm sure Mr. Meyer will mention that. I want to mention uh, uh, Chloe Clark. Uh, she participated in regional solos um, and small ensembles on March 29th. She got a one rating in vocal and clarinet. So she'll be going to the state to participate on uh, ensembles on, on April 26th. Um, Last Tuesday night, we hosted the, it was our turn to host the CPL Honors Banquet. 
we did it fill in the community room this time. Um, I put up there the six seniors. It's the top 10% of your junior and senior class. We don't have 60 kids in our senior class, but those six have 4.0 GPAs, so that's why they're all invited. Um, and then the top three, the top 10 percent, the three juniors that were invited. Um, junior senior play is this weekend. If you're so inclined, I'm sure you all will be out there to uh, come watch the uh, kids. Uh, prom, you're all invited to attend uh, prom um, on the 26th. Uh, track and golf uh, have started. Uh, junior High Booster Club uh, Banquet will be Thursday, April 24th. I didn't put this on here. Um, I forgot about putting that on there. Today we did, um, this year we started, um, Mrs. Patterson started the SAFE program for seatbelts and safety and kids wearing seatbelts through the Highway Patrol. And we do pledge with Stafford and Maxville and we have pledges and we keep track and, uh, of how we do throughout the year using seatbelts. So the Kansas the Highway Patrol um, Department of Transportation, they have this program they've done in other states. Um, it's called Think Fast. And they um, did it in, the first time they did it was here recently, a couple months ago in Ottawa. And this is only the second time they did it in Kansas. So they were here today and they chose Ottawa, they chose Stafford County, Norton County, and Trigo County, the three counties besides Ottawa that they did this in in Kansas. So tomorrow they'll go to Norton, I believe, and Thursday they go to Trigo. So they, they come bring people that travel set up big screens, microphones, they have these, like you're like it's on Jeopardy, like you're standing there and you have contestants. And they, they invite all the kids, so Maxville and Stafford, their whole high schools were all here today, and we were in the gym and they had these big screens and they asked kids questions, they invite them up into teams of three or four and they give them these clickers. And they're all on a team and it keeps track of the points and they add up and kids got prizes and it was a cool thing. So, um, yeah, it's called King Pass, so it's kind of a neat deal. Um, I'm not really sure why I put CPO meeting up there. I don't know that. Not really. I'm not sure if we were. We have nine schools in our league. We're trying to get a tenth one. As you know, Medicine Lodge didn't get in. I told you guys that earlier here. They tried to get in, but they were too far away. They didn't get enough votes. So we're trying to find a tenth team or a tenth school because we have nine when Ellenwood starts officially next year. And you should have uh, activity accounts for your ledger. <coughs> Questions or anything? Thank you, Mr. Burger. Um, Mr. All have mentioned the assessments. Uh, that situation is is a mess. Um, everything is, has changed. Uh, uh, this is the pilot year, so uh, I guess our goal is to get them done with as little disruption as possible. Um, you know. It's good to get the data um, about student learning, uh, but we don't want it to get in, get in the way of the actual student learning. So we'll do what we can uh, to get those done, um, but it's not a priority. Uh, if, uh, it's, I still think maybe in the back of my mind that we're going to end up with a lot of schools not getting them done just because of all the technical difficulties. So the goal is to get them done, but uh, with as little disruption as possible. Um, our curriculum through the year, I think the group really learned learned a lot. Um, I think one of the, the best things that came of that so far, um, I think Jill was in there, she could uh, say yes or no on this, but every math teacher, uh, for the most part, we couldn't include everybody in elementary in these, just logistics <coughs> and the subs and everything. We were stretched thin as it was, but, uh, you know, Every grade level, we talked about what's taught in every grade. We don't have this, uh, I do this unit because I like doing that. It's this is what's supposed to be taught. We know what's taught in kindergarten. We know what's taught in fourth grade. And everybody discussed that. Um, <clears throat> next year, again, we'll validate that curriculum and make sure things are in place. Uh, the consultant that we've been working with will be going through our curriculum this summer. And next year, make sure everything is aligned to the standards as it should be. That when we take those state assessments, will be uh, that all that curriculum is part of that. We've done that, but she's going to be verifying all that. Um, I want to show you a picture here. We talk a lot about MTSS and what that, what is that really? Um, 
and we've, I guess, done MTSS for some time. Um, but I think one key part that we've been missing here is, is this curriculum stuff. Uh, you know, the, the outer part of this, when we talk about MTSS, what are we talking about? You know, there needs to be professional development. We need to have leadership from these guys and myself and the culture needs to be set up. And the parts of that are the instruction in there, and then the curriculum is a big part of that. And, uh, and then assessment. We can't really instruct and assess unless we know what we're, what we're teaching. So if you think about all these, we have three tiers. The bottom tier would be all of our kids. That's tier one. And then tier two, and then tier three would be our, our higher needs kids. Kids aren't getting this. Why aren't they getting it? Well, we're testing them and understanding that. That's why we have that extra time for MTSS. But the piece I think we've been missing is making sure that this first tier, the bottom part, the core, all of our kids, we know exactly what's supposed to be taught at every level. That's this piece of the curriculum. Uh, so it's not separate from MTSS. It's really the foundation of, of that whole process. So I don't think this is a different thing that we've been doing. It's, it's all still part of that process, if that makes sense. Yes, sir. I'm confused. Okay. Uh, testing and, you know, the kids are supposed to know A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. well, how does uh, the uh, common core thing that in the legislature did away with wanting to be part of um, the multi-state thing on um, what kids should know? No, they didn't. Oh, they left that back in, right? At the last minute? That's, they put that in? No. Or, okay. No, it's not part of the new legislation. We're still, we're still a part of Common Core, and the state has their standards based on Common Core. Okay. So. They were talking about taking it out. They were, yes. Okay, but they left it in. Right. Okay. Now I'm not as confused yeah. as I was. Yes. So thank you. All right. Okay. Another uh, item is a district leadership team. We're meeting with that group uh, here on Wednesday. Um, we're going to go over some, some of our facility improvements uh, uh, and the progress that we made and what we're going to be doing next steps. Uh, talk a little bit about our curriculum um, and then the legislative and budget items. We're going to go back through that CISL review with this group. I've showed it to them, we just haven't talked a lot about it, and uh, we probably need to include that in our goal setting as well. Um, we talked about at the building levels, what, what technology we have, uh, what are our course offerings, and some of those things. So, and we're meeting with that group coming up here Wednesday. Uh, Something that's not on the list here, uh, Mr. Bergen um, and Lisa and Wendy, uh, uh, Mrs. Cornwell, Mrs. Hacker, and I met with some representatives from Barton County to try to see what we can, what additional offerings we can uh, we can have here at St. John or offer our kids there. Um, so a few of the things we've got in place, uh, uh, kids can go to Barton. Uh, of the morning for ag program or automotive and that's with Senate Bill 155 that is tuition free kids have to pay some fees and the textbook but the tuition is paid by the state uh, we'll get reimbursed for transportation so it's tough for us to find somebody to drive kids to Barton or Pratt or somewhere else uh, with just any class, but if we can get something set up where it's in the morning We can take them up at 730 and pick them up at noon and do that every day on a regular schedule It's a little more feasible to do that. We've got a kid that has a 10 o'clock class another one has a 130 and another one has a 3 We can't make that happen so uh, Kids will have those opportunities for ag and agriculture um, our computer class here might be uh, for college credit here with the same rules. Um, 
fees paid by the student, but the tuition is free. That's the bulk of the cost. Um, also, plant science and animal science. We're trying to get uh, that worked out. We think we've got it worked out. We're going to hire. Here. Yeah. They'll send down an instructor and uh, have that class available for college credit uh, during one hour uh, of the day for all year. Uh, with that, those same rules, that's that, uh, the tuition free. Uh, if we do something here, we would likely pick up the textbook cost because we could reuse those every year. Uh, and that would be the same as if we added our own ag class or something like that. So uh, we have those offerings. Mr. Bergen, did I miss anything there? No. And those? Yeah, there's, there's a couple. I'm not sure about one of the programs. It may not be able to get started until one of their programs. May not be able to start till oh, the following building? year. Yeah, yeah, might not be able to start till the next year. Okay, right. right. Yeah. So, and just a matter of whether we can work all that logistically, whether we can work that out. Mm -hmm. right. so, yeah, but that's in the works. Yeah. So yeah. would that be for all high school students, or just like seniors, or how would how would juniors, juniors and seniors? Yeah, yeah. Juniors, seniors. You, um, I think you could get a uh, depending on if a kid had an IEP gifted, you could get a sophomore. For the most part, juniors and seniors. Most part, juniors and seniors, yes. Or aren't they taking required classes? Well, that's what I was wondering. You know, yeah, right. Required classes. Yeah, you'd have, they'd, they'd, it would have to, uh, like I say, it's, to be able to block a time like that, it would have to fit in there. They'd have to be able to make it work in their schedule. Right. Another issue, and this has been <laughs> several years ago, was the athletic side, and I'm not for sure. If it's still in the handbook, that if you miss a half a day, then you cannot what oh, yeah, it, you, participate. Yeah, right. But yeah, if you were if you were at, if you were at school, that would be okay. Right. right. Yeah, if you were at a school, if you went to work to work on a class or had a college class going on, that would that would apply. Well, if I know we we ran into this years ago, so it was kind of up to the board to determine what the okay these this, these would be dual credit. Well, so, this was a dual or, credit, but okay. You know, if the boards change their mind, that's fine. If it's in the handbook, that they can do it. But I know it was, a, and it was a gifted student back then. And it was kind of a big issue. No. I don't, I don't see that as being an issue at all. If they're taking a college class and it's dual credit for, for the, uh, you know, within the within the school day, they're at school. Okay. So. Just yeah, yeah. I understand. Because I know saying. somebody brings it back up again. Goes, well, my kid tried to do that. So. Yeah, and the scheduling, some of those things uh, you know, may affect uh, right. how we, where we need to put classes and those things. But we're trying to get as many opportunities for our kids as we can. So. I like the idea. I'm, I'm going to go work. It's very different. Um, one other thing that's not on my list here is the uh, goal setting in August. Um, we typically take some time to set goals. Um, I didn't think it went as well. I tried to lead that this year. I think it would benefit us more if we had somebody from KSB here. I've contacted them about uh, the possibility of doing that. Um, it works out nice with the timing for uh, our budget. We have to have a special meeting for the budget. We approve the budget and we get together anyway. We'll have the goal set. So I'll kind of tentatively plan on having somebody come in uh, and working with us on that. If, if you are okay with that, something I've been working on. Um, legislative stuff. Um, it's been kind of a crazy weekend, uh, pretty much uh, all night Friday night, all day Saturday, all, all, all through the day uh, Sunday. Uh, the uh, trying to comply with the Supreme Court, uh, their ruling to fund schools equitably. So what has come out of this um, is on your um, on your documents there, the one that says report, the first word. Uh, there's a few other things in there that I'm not going to go over everything. But uh, what we're talking about is the LOB state aid, the local option budget. Uh, on the far right side is the compromise, what has happened. They fully fund that equalization aid. We don't get that equalization aid. Uh, 
our valuation is high enough that, uh, take for example, uh, Stafford, their mill levy would have to be twice what ours is to levy the same amount of dollars. That's why it's seen as unfair. Uh, we can raise a lot more dollars for one mill uh, than they can. So that's what we're talking about here. We get none of that aid, um, but they fully funded that. The maximum local option budget our local option budget is based on our general fund. Right now it's 30% of the general fund, sort of. Uh, this bill increases it to 33%. Now, uh, what's required is the mail ballot election to do that, uh, which I don't believe is a problem except uh, it's uh, the time frame to get it done. We're being told, I was told today that most county clerks say that that's not possible to get it done in that time frame. So we'll see what happens with that. But part of this law to make the finances work, we need to have that option. So um, the local option budget, that next part, special LOB base state aid, it's the base state aid per pupil right now is $3,838. That'll increase a little bit, but the LOB is based on a different number. Why? To give us more authority to tax our local patrons rather than getting it from the state. So that has increased. Uh, they increased that number. Um, capital outlay state aid, it's the same thing as the LOB aid. We get none of that, uh, but they fully fund that. Now the expanded use of capital outlay, since they will fully fund that equalization aid, that allows us to spend our capital outlay money on a few other things that we normally can't. One is software. We can buy computers, we just can't buy the software for it. Um, but this, with this fully funded, we can buy software. Another thing is maintenance of equipment, uh, which I believe will include vehicles, which is a big deal uh, for us. That's a significant amount we spend each year on that. Um, and uh, the third would be performance uniforms. And I think the question has been asked if that includes uh, superintendent attire. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they can, uh, there's a performance going on there. But. <laughs> <laughs> the statutory base state aid per pupil uh, really means nothing because they haven't funded that for years. So. Um, the actual base state aid will go up by $14. That was planned. That makes about $8,300 worth of difference to us. Um, the transportation aid, that was kind of a big deal coming in. They were looking at cutting that. Um, that has not changed. The at-risk stu students, they will eliminate from the at-risk student count students over 19 years old. Uh, that's based on free lunch count has nothing to do with whether they eat the lunch or not. Um, but that does affect us because we count anybody in our adult program, we count them as at risk. So uh, that's been eliminated. Uh, Non-proficient at risk, that's an area where if students didn't meet proficient on the state assessment, we got extra funding for them. Um, virtual waiting. Um, that has changed some. This doesn't apply to us. We don't have a virtual school. Our adult learners in the Stafford Learning Center, uh, they're not virtual learners. They actually go, uh, they, they are attending a program. New facilities waiting does not apply to us. The policy issues really became the, uh, the tough issues uh, politically. Um, that first one is really just a, a lawsuit issue and what they're, they're not saying local effort anymore. They're just saying uh, education dollars or something like that. It's all uh, smoke and mirrors there. Um, the education standards, they're going to put that into law of what, what it means to be educated. That's, again, part of the lawsuit. Study commission, teacher licensure, they're going to change the way, uh, make it easier for some teachers to be licensed if they if they, you know, like a mechanic in a career tech ed situation, it might be easier to be licensed, or somebody who has a bachelor's degree uh, in science, it'd be easier to get them licensed as a teacher. Uh, the 
The Tort Claims Act requires notification for teachers. I think this is an issue of making sure teachers know they don't have to belong to the union to be protected against lawsuits. Um, I think that was what the entire point of that was. Um, the last one there, the innovative districts, doesn't affect us. Uh, and then the one right above that, due process rights for teachers. What we're talking about there is tenure. Uh, after three years, teachers have the right to due process before they, uh, before they can be fired. Um, and this does away with that. Now this bill hasn't been entered into the register, so we don't know everything about it. So we're still a week out from all that, it's still very early. This was all completed yesterday. Uh, and things changed a lot. I was in regular contact with our legislators about it. Um, uh, Senator, or Representative Chrisman was very supportive on the funding part. Um, uh, he voted for this change and with the teacher tenure part. Uh, I, I think he'll get a lot of criticism for that. Um, and that is, that is a big deal to, to a lot of our teachers. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any interest in letting people go because they make too much money or because they won't coach a sport. There's been a handful of those things, you know, I wonder if. Um, but there, there's, I think there's going to be a lot of unintended consequences there. Uh, that, that we don't know what's going to happen. So we'll see how some of those play, things play out. Uh, any questions about those policy items? Or I'll show you numbers here in a second. I just wonder how a mail-in election works. Who do I show my ID to to verify who I am before I can do that? That's a great question. I don't know the answer. To that. Well, I'm just mm -hmm. just thought it was a little odd. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, I'll call uh, Mr. Coburn and ask. Mm -hmm. Uh, here's what the uh, you might want to pull this one up on your sheet here. The one that's uh, uh, SSHB 2506 final spreadsheet. See what I'm talking about there? Might not be able to get it big enough up here. Okay, what is it? The one that says final 417 14 spreadsheet. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the effect on our district. The general fund increases in column one, that's from increasing the base, state aid for people, $14. Column two, the at risk reduction, um, and column three is the non proficient at risk. So the kids that we count over that are over 19, that's a a reasonable, that's a significant loss there. <coughs> so our general fund adjustments between the increase in base state aid and those reductions nets a loss of almost $19,000 in our general fund. The rest of this doesn't really fit because the number's not quite right. Uh, column 7 just totals that. And then column 8, they said that's what we can make from the extra LOB authority. The number's not right, though. If we look at um, the one right above that, it says USD 350 figures. This is how it's going to affect us. Part of the reason that was not correct is they're, they're assuming our enrollment will be the same next year as it will be this year. And I'm assuming that as well, but when they reduce our general fund, that's reducing our enrollment number, our FTE. So <coughs> this is our total FTE. We take out special ed because it's going to be the same and we pass that through most of it. Uh, so I'm not figuring that in our revenue. So this is our FTE without the special ed this year. Um, changing those numbers, the at risk and those things. This would be our new FTE, and then so it's really a loss of seven FTE is that dollar amount, almost nineteen thousand. So that's what we're talking about. Well, this loss of FTE then affects our local option budget because it's all based on enrollment numbers. 
Um, our actual LOB was this amount. The maximum we could levy was this. Uh, increased enrollment again. Uh, we didn't pad our budget enough. So we could have been at this. Our mill levy would have been a little bit higher. But, um, so what would happen next year with just that changing the local option budget number to this number, what would be uh, we'd be about thirteen thousand dollars higher, almost fourteen thousand dollars higher in our local option budget than we are this year. So that net increase or decrease, the net change, we're going to lose about five thousand dollars. If we don't do anything with our budget, we just stay at 30%, we lose that in our general fund, that local option budget figure that they use to calculate is a little higher. Doing nothing with our, with our budget, we lose about $5,000 in our operating budget. Notice what our mill levy does even though we're losing money. It goes up just a fraction. Because we have to levy a little bit more taxes to make it work. And these are estimates here. So a lot of things will affect that. Now what happens if, <coughs> if we can go to 33%? I, I included all those, I'll just talk about 33%. Um, if we levy 33% of our general fund, that uh, gives us this amount, just over a million dollars compared to 903. So an increase of $105,000. So when we count in that, decrease in our general fund, this is what will happen to our operating budget. So it's higher. But notice what happens to the mail levy. It's going to go up, right? So we send out the mail ballot, we want to increase to 33%. That means my taxes are going to go up. So part of that is, that's a shift of from state dollars to local dollars. State gives us less, uh, we either do with less or raise it locally. That's what's happened. A little bit. This shift would be more dramatic. We're getting more dollars into our operating budget, where we can buy uh, buy classroom supplies with, what we can pay teachers with, where we can put fuel on the bus. That increases this budget, but our capital outlay, we can just decrease that mill levy by this amount to make up for it. Less in capital outlay, more in our operating budget. I think that's a no-brainer. Um, we, we try all the time in our office, how do we take things that we've purchased and purchase them out of capital outlay instead. And we test our auditors on that. We have to follow the law, but we test it. Uh, that's to require a land ballot, doing you know, that, decrease, decreasing the capital outlay, increasing that. To, to change this LOB to make it higher, that requires a vote of the people. To go above 30% requires a vote of the people. And you're saying that can't be accomplished before all That's what I was told today. That's what I've heard. I don't know. It, if that's the case, I'm guessing they'll clean that up when they come back. And there, there's a chance. If that, if that time frame can't happen, they may come back and say, it could just be a vote of the board for one year. And then next year, to keep that at 33%, you'd have to have a, an election to do that. And, and it'll be, I, I think it's a no-brainer, but people have to know. And it's, it's one thing if they're coming to the polls to vote for those things, it's completely another if they haven't heard anything about it and they get something in the mail. Um, so getting more dollars into our operating budget and we can take some out of capital outlay to do that and make it work mill levy wise. Does that make sense? The other thing we'll have to do, I mentioned on the capital outlay, having that different authority to purchase other things, that flexibility, we'll have to publish a new resolution. Usually, uh, if you recall, we did that um, in October, is that, that would have been a year ago this past October? Anyway, we have to publish a resolution that says, uh, well, it's when we went up to eight mills. 
So that's the maximum. We set it at eight mils for five years. Typically, you can't change that until that's expired. We'll have to publish a new resolution because that resolution says what we're going to spend that money on. The resolution we publish doesn't include uniforms and software and maintenance, equipment maintenance. So they did make an exception with this bill to say, okay, you can redo your capital outlay resolution at any time. So we can redo that. And again, that resolution would be setting our maximum just because it's set at eight doesn't mean we can't decrease it by two and a half or five whenever we want to. Okay. Whatever our budget needs are. So when <clears throat> next month after these bids are, uh, we know what that number is, uh, do we have a, a new idea of or again, review the future costs of everything we have, and then how much of that project do we think we can afford if we're going to reduce the capital outlay plus pay other things out of the capital outlay? Just offhand, it seems yeah. hard to think that we can do the whole thing. That all those options, <clears throat> to me, would be off the table. The additional things, the locker rooms and that, um, just offhand. Um, I don't want to throw out numbers here now. You know, the locker rooms that was, was 90000 basically. Yeah. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. I didn't. And uh, Julianne kind of asked this too, what if one year we need more in capital outlay and less and uh, maybe we don't need quite as much in LOB, can we change that as we need to? And yes, we can. Uh, what Kind of what we were talking about is it wouldn't make sense to do that because we have freedom to spend this money pretty much however we want. We can buy a vehicle out of there. We can purchase computers out of our LOB we have more freedom there than we do out of our capital outlay. So it makes sense to always keep this maximum and adjust the capital outlay down with the with our needs for taxes, for the tax revenue. If that makes sense. So we buy so we buy cars and buses and stuff out of LOB. Right. We can. Yeah. Okay. The only thing we can't do with LOB is transfer it to contingency and uh, pay for capital lease uh, payment. But we can't out of our general. Which, so really it's just like general fund money. We can spend it however we think we need to. Except for the more flexibility. Yes. yes. Yeah. But that would take a load of people to mm -hmm. change the same. And communication would be very important on this. Mm -hmm. And people understand that just because we have our maximum of eight mills doesn't mean we have to levy that or that we will levy on that. So I know this is a lot to a lot to take in. Um, uh, bottom line is if if we can work this local option budget, our bet our budget is in a lot better shape. Not a huge difference, but significant, enough to matter. And that just means you know, fewer projects for buildings or maybe changing our vehicle rotation schedule, some of those things. And we reduce the capital outlay. Might change some of those things. Um, and again, it's all still pretty early. This was all yesterday, so things like the mail ballot and uh, what do we have to do there, what are we going to be able to do, those things will clear up over the next week. And, uh, I think one of the main issues that uh, 
one of the tough issues is that that tenure issue. Uh, that's got uh, teachers worried. And, uh, but we really don't know anything about it at this point. No, um, no, other than it's been removed. Um, and you may have questions later. Um, shoot me an email, give me a call if you have questions about anything we've covered there. Uh, concession coordinator, I just wanted to update you. We're kind of through the year. We've got a few track needs left to handle, but um, we, we paid about $700 for that salary for that. Groups made about 33% profit. Um, Tara has by far done, uh, Kinnaman, she's by far done the most concessions. She said she expected 35 to 40, and with paying that concession coordinator, it's a little lower than that. So I was very pleased with how that all worked out. Um, saves our groups a lot of time and effort. Uh, it was a little less profit than I thought there might be. But. The sponsors like it, not having to yes. organize it. Yeah, you don't have to count the candy every night. You don't have to... Uh, try to sell your stuff to somebody else. And, uh, you so they up. felt a little bit of profit loss was well worth it. Yeah, and I didn't poll everybody, but a couple I talked to. And, uh, uh, parking situation, I just wanted to update you on real quick. We're looking at what we might be able to do with our parking situation with our new office uh, out on that side of the building. It's always kind of difficult with people picking up preschool and dropping off and picking up kids. Um, uh, maybe looking at, uh, and, and Julian has mentioned this to uh, Mel and Chief Saylor, about potential for one way right out of here. That would allow us to get some angle parking, uh, fit more cars in, uh, but the street out here would have to be one way. So I don't know if that's doable or if it makes sense, and I don't know which way it would go, but just if you hear some talk about that, that's what we're talking about. Okay. Used to, we parked in the parking lot by the library and walked down there and got our kids. Right. And that may be part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honest. It happened. <laughs> uh, state basketball. Uh, I was very pleased with... Uh, with our boys, the team, I think they represent us very well. Uh, the state championship celebration, Booster Club did a great job with that. It was, it was really neat to see those boys get up there and uh, well spoken. And, uh, but they were well behaved kids. And I think to me that's uh, that's a, a testament. Uh, I, th I think I'm more proud of that than the, the what great young men they are than the fact that they won. So it's really nice to see. I do have a card here uh, that would come from the board. Uh, Mr. Fisher asked me to get a card and make sure we we recognize, as the board recognized the team uh, officially. So it's blank. And we can write whatever you want on it. But uh, if you would, before you leave, sign that for our boys uh, and coaches. Um, I and Milton got together donations. Uh, which is always a huge help. Uh, it costs a lot of money to send those kids to uh, uh, out of town, and uh, it's, it's kind of nice to have that bill <laughs> for that reason. Uh, but it is expensive, and any of those donations help. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, one more thing: the uh, color run, uh, the economic development, uh, Sydney, and. Uh, and then Lisa Cornwell, they uh, put together that color run. That uh, was a few weeks ago and raised uh, about $1,400 for, for the foundation. Yeah, so that was a pretty nice deal. And that's all I have. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Okay. Um, Mr. Moving on to executive session, personnel. We have one additional item negotiations to have for executive session. Who do we need? Uh, two principals and myself. Two principals and Mr. Miles for uh, at least 30 minutes in the Yeah, 
Okay. In the fund number eight. They're bending break. Probably break. Yeah. Okay. Let's recess for five minutes. Okay.